yeah, um, much changed Chicago group, but you know sometimes that can cause a uh, some some strange um, you know mental sort of lapses for a group when they see so many changes, think that the job might be a tad easier, and and they couldn't have been further from the truth about that against the Chicago group, but I thought we started well, um, dominated proceedings for a good while. And my only concern was that we only scored one in that first period when there might well have been, uh, you know, two or three other opportunities to extend our lead. Um, the second half, I, I thought we started fairly slowly and, and I thought they had their best spell for about 15 minutes in that, that first period of, of the second half. Um, but slowly but surely we got ourselves back into a groove and in the end it's been a, a, a very good victory. Yeah, I, I mean, I honestly thought where the stadium blocks out most of the, the initial sunlight, the, the temperatures in the shade were, were quite considerably lower than any direct sunlight. But you're right, it, it was the first warm day in a good while. And I'm sure the guys, um, you know, felt that. And I've got to be honest, I thought the pace of the game was still very, very high. We put an awful lot into it to try and take the game and pressurise Chicago and unsettle them. And, and I thought we did it very, very well. But I think you see some of the changes that were made to try and just give the group a little bit of a, a, a lift in terms of energy and to see the game out. In, in terms of Lucas and, and Teal, um, whilst both of those guys were absolutely terrific, they're both carrying um, or coming back from uh, difficulties. And I just didn't want to take any more chances with them, which is why they were off. But the rest of it was really just to, to try and lift the group with some more energy and, and to see the game out. Well, the, the first period, I, I thought that left-hand side for us was a, a really productive area. And I, I know I've said this a couple of times, but when you've got guys that are so electric quick, if you're not and you're playing against them, there's a fear factor. There's a concern. You've got to give yourself a bit more space. You've got to deny any opportunity to run in beyond because you're never going to catch them. And I thought we had some very, very good moments down that left-hand side and maybe there were a couple more to be had. But it really wasn't until we saw what was a fantastic individual run from almost the halfway line again that we've seen before and he earned the second penalty that he really got his just desserts for some of the efforts and the energies that he put into the game. I thought he was absolutely fantastic and... I'm sure you understand that when he came off, he he was absolutely, uh, you know, winded and, and, you know, physically had put everything into the game. Yeah, Coach, obviously, Connie had a really good game tonight. He scored three goals, but Walker certainly didn't play tonight. And Ricky stepped up, played really well. What was his impact like for the team and just how well he did for on the back line? I thought it was absolutely fantastic, Lucas. Um he came into us, as you well know, in a trade just before the window closed. He actually came to us with a little bit of a problem that he'd picked up um, on that Saturday prior to the trade, and we knew that. Um, so we've been nursing him through a little bit of a difficulty, and what he has been able to do with not a lot of training time is fill some very, very big shoes in Walker, um, and extremely well. I, I thought he was aggressive. Um, he, he was he was a you know a presence back there, and when needed, I thought he was very calm on the ball. And if you looked at how he played and how he fitted in, you'd have thought he'd have been here for two or three seasons, which is always a good sign. Delighted with one, the character that he's shown to stand up and step up for the group in a difficult time when. It would have been easy for him to say, look, I need a bit more time to get myself together here. 
um, but immense. And, and only overshadowed, I think, by Hanny's hat-trick. Um, second time that he scored a hat-trick against Chicago. Um, I think I was heard on the way in that he scored three hat-tricks, two against Chicago, which is a little bit strange. And But you find that sometimes players have a, you know, there's something that they enjoy about certain teams. And um, this one's obviously for Hanny. Yeah, at 1-0, I think we all know there's always that concern that the other team, um, you know, in, in trying to push for a goal, find a little bit of fortune or a little bit of quality. And there's no doubt, as they started to bring players into the game, they were adding bodies that we've probably seen more regularly in their starting lineup. Um, so there, there, there was a, a worry that if we didn't get that second goal, that there might be... Um, some, some edgy moments as, as the game, um, you know, started to wind down. Um, but, I, you know, I've got to say the, the attitude of the players, the willingness to, you know, to find not only that second goal, but obviously the third and the threat beyond remained throughout the game. And I've seen on many occasions now that if we can get ourselves in front and teams committing more players to the attack and trying to press a little bit higher. You know, we're at our best or can release some players with real athleticism and pace um, and, and the likes of Fafa and, and Hanny and, and even Ethan at the end there were in very, very good spots and willing to make the very best of those moments. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think they were very different games. Uh, there, there, there were some. I think there were some instances in that LA game that that there was a combination of events um, that I think presented a very different challenge for the group. But I, I still thought um, that that Chicago, in trying to press and and impress upon us some of those you know, very talented players that they brought on, found a couple of little pockets and opportunities and, and probably their best sights a goal in that window between the, the the sort of hour mark to 70, 75 minutes and, you know, moving then into a back five to just give us a little bit more stability what was, I felt, the right move and in the end turned out to be, you know, obviously a, a move that, enabled us to see the game out. But uh, look, with Walker out and he picked up, um, you know, some soreness that he walked out of training on Friday and I was hoping that he'd be fine. Um, it seems like the scan's not revealed an awful lot, um, but we'll find out a bit more on Monday. But he's a big loss and, you know, knowing that I probably had to take Lucas out at some point, um, Daniel does a sterling job in there. I think it was just the, the, the sequence of events against LA that probably presented something that was a little bit tougher to deal with. Well, no, I, I think you can. I think you can look at the changes that were made and see that there was 
There was energy injected into the group. You know, the two central midfield guys in Dax and Annabelle were terrific, but they put an awful lot into the game. Um, you know, you have to remember that in the early exchanges of both halves of the game, I'm asking them to do a hell of a lot more than they've probably done in those midfield areas in shutting down and chasing out wide. And I couldn't ask for any more from them. So when you've got two experienced guys and two very talented guys on the line like Sean and Yan, and of course Brian Anunga who, who didn't see the field today, um, it makes absolute sense to, to, you know, to bring them in and to give everyone else a lift in one of the most... Um, you know, competitive areas of the field. So we certainly wanted to push on and get that that um, second goal. Um, Faffer's inclusion um, at 2-0 could have easily been a defensive player. Um, the fact that Alex goes to wing-back, I could have brought on a centre-back and played Shaq at right wing-back. But giving or, or putting Alex into that world, I know that he's going to give us a little bit more probably going forward and pressing into that midfield. The, the combination of, of, I think, the player's attitude, um, the confidence in the group, uh, players that are out there that are, are really feeling the moment, I think drove us on and a bit of extra energy to what was a, a very good win in the end and a, um, you know, a comfortable win. But it, it certainly wasn't that way if, if you were here. I was actually happier with, you know, the early exchange and certainly the first half where I thought there were some moments we should have made far more of and gone in feeling a lot more comfortable than we did at 1-0. Um, so, you know, without getting too down about that, having won well, I think one of the criticisms of the group is at that point where you're on top, you've got to make the very most of it. Well, yeah, I, I, I would agree totally. You know, he's he's been absolutely fantastic for this team and this franchise. There's no doubt about it. But I would also add to that, he's a fabulous person and he's a very, very hard-working lad. You know, this is this is not just the result of somebody turning up at the weekend and, and using their talent to uh, the best degree. He works very hard in the week. He's constantly trying to, you know, refine whether it's set pieces or individual work and choices he's making. And I think you can see the benefits and results of that. I would also have to add that I think the support around him has been absolutely fantastic. But there is no doubt you need a jewel in any crown. And he is certainly that. And he's been wonderful for us. And today, I think, typifies again. And if I'm not mistaken, after a couple of weekends of saying... He sometimes takes a little while to get into gear. I'm hoping that this weekend might be that weekend where he goes into third or fourth gear and he keeps that going and pulls away.